Again, welcome to Research Methods in Computers and Society. This is CS312. In this lecture, we're going to cover the secondary data, which is chapter eight of our course textbook. So again, chapter eight, secondary data. And our main objective is to describe the benefits of using secondary data. Also identify the major sources of secondary data explain the drawbacks of using secondary data. So first, the benefit of secondary data in very short way, I would say the cost and also the time it takes. Because the secondary data is a data that has been used by other researchers. So which means if I want to use the secondary data, I don't have to prepare the data or to look for the missing values, uh, any errors in the data, because this data has been used by other researchers. So they have done the data preparation. And in, in the concept of data mining or data analysis, we always say that 60% of the work is done during the data preparation phase. So sometimes the data preparation phase can take up to 80% of the data analytics work. So that is the benefit of a secondary data. We don't need to do any data preparation. It has been done for us. Also, the major source of secondary data will be online, will be the internet. And now most uh, in articles when it's being published, uh, the publishers again have a website, most likely we'll see all this publication online. If the article goes with the data or data has been used in the work, the data most likely will be also be released to the public in a database system. So we have a lot of database system online, which most of them are even free of charge. Example would be government agencies such as CDC, the Center for Disease Control. They have so many data about the public health issues. This data is available on their website for free. We also have the National Cancer Institute. They also have so many data about uh, DNA sequence and genes about the patients, mostly patients that have uh, genetic problems and uh, diseases such as uh, any form of cancer. They have all these database on online patients. Of course, the patient identification is uh, there's a privacy on that. So for example, if we have a database system about patients that have uh, breast cancer between 1999 to 2009 in US, uh, when we go to the identification of the patient, most likely to be a unique number. Um, they, they, they will not use names. That's for privacy issue. But again, sources of secondary data, we have so many online mostly government agencies. Also, we should explain the drawback of using secondary data. Again, since this data is not a data that we generated, sometimes it will be difficult to understand the data in detail. Uh, we have to study the data because we are not the one who collected this data. So that will be, there are so many drawbacks that we'll go through, but I'm just trying to analyze our main objective for this course today, chapter eight, secondary data. Where do we get secondary data for mostly online? The benefit of using it, uh, we don't have to do a data preparation, so we save the cost and also we save time. Uh, the drawback, sometimes it's difficult to understand this data. We have to take our time to study the data. Since it's not, we, we are not the one who generated this data, so we need to study it. Again, we'll go through the textbook. There are so many reasons of using secondary data or not to use the secondary data. So first we start with the definition. And according to the textbook, a secondary data is a data or raw information collected by other researchers. So again, that's why we say secondary data, data that has been used already in a research work. But the primary data is a data that is collected for a specific purpose by the researcher. So if I want to do any research or any studies, the data that are collected 
is the primary data because I went to the field and collected this data. I'm not using the data that has been used by other researchers, which is again the secondary data. So the benefit of using secondary data, and here we say the availability of information, and this information is always available online most of the time. As also opportunities for replication. We can again reproduce. Then protection of participants is very important because again, when we are going to do a research, especially medical research, most likely we have to be careful not to harm the patients, especially if we are going to test the drugs or other medical problem. Now, if we have a secondary data, let's say I want to do a research on a, a specific disease, let's say disease A. If I have a secondary data that explains the attribute of disease A based on the data we collected from, let's say 10,000 patients, then in this case, I don't have to get a new participants to generate a, a primary data. So the data and one advantage protection of participants. Time effectiveness, we said that now primary data, we have to take our time to do our data preparation. Again, in data analysis, there are so many techniques in data preparation. Also, we have to have the experience. How many data we need? Is the data too much for the algorithm? Is the data too small for the algorithm to perform an efficient task? We need to consider all this what attributes are more important to the outcome and uh, we need to consider but again this work has been done already in secondary data for us so we save time and also we save the cost always most of the time the major benefit of secondary data will say the time and the cost and we also have a large data set most secondary data are very large which means to collect this data it can take a lot of time and also make costs more. So we start with the availability of information, so secondary data. Again, most secondary data, they are online. We have so many available, right? mostly government agencies. So here we say this allows use of data that may have since become impossible to collect. And so an example is uh, Emelik Dukham use secondary data to examine government statistics on suicide from different countries. So collecting this data from different countries may consume a lot of time and also the cost. Now, if we can get the data from 90% of the countries around the world that have data about suicide, then we can use it as a secondary data and this will save our time and also the cost. So the opportunities for, again, replication, because replication can happen in two ways. Either through primary data collection, similar to the original study, but with different populations in a different location, or through the use of secondary data to which we can add additional information so in some cases, from the original study participants that may be missing from the original studies. So opportunity for replication. I have a secondary data, and I find out that some data is missing. I may collect that data, then I can include it in the secondary data. So replication can occur in two ways, either through the primary data collection or through the use of secondary data to add it. Now, protection of participants is one of the advantages of using a secondary data also, especially if you are doing research, as we said, in medical field. Yeah, we can, you know, it's easy to harm the participants, especially if it's a drug discovery or disease uh, attributes outcome we want to know based on some attributes that we are going to manipulate to see the outcome of the result of the disease. Again, this, we have to be careful about the safety of the participants. 
So here we see in some instances, utilizing the secondary data can be very, very useful with sensitive populations of interest, especially in the medical field, very useful. Or let's, let's say we are going to do a research on a new drug discovery, on a new disease. In this case, most likely we don't have no secondary data. So we need to generate our own primary data and work on it. But if on an old disease, most likely you may have a data about that disease already, patients with that disease, we may decide to use it. So here we say, for example, a researcher is interested in conducting research with victims of childhood abuse can gather secondary data such as through the police reports or may decide to generate its own primary data which again will take time and also the cost. Also with the secondary data, there's a time effectiveness. Collecting primary data requires a great deal of time. Not only that, but also require the cost. And we have to be very, very strict. We have to follow a set of protocol collecting the data. And then during the data preparation process, another time again. But when we have a secondary data, it's very time effectiveness. We don't need data preparation process on a secondary data because it has been done already. So collecting a quantitative or qualitative data can take a few months to a, to a few years, particularly if you are dealing with a large studies. But secondary data will eliminate the time and even effort involved with primary data collection with secondary data at all, concerned about the time of collecting the data in terms of primary data set. Also the cost effectiveness. We know primary data set collection can be very costly, but we need to go to the field, collect the data, and we waste some time, transportation to the field, so the cost is there. And also primary data collection costs include the funds for tools that we use or the participants, we have to give them some incentive. And then let's keep going. These costs are not present again when you are working with secondary data. If I'm working with secondary data, uh, I don't think I will need to have a participant's incentive because again, the data is already generated. I don't need any participants. Also, secondary data, especially online, we have a large, large data set. As we said earlier about the replication, the replication means I have a secondary data. I can add more new data to it. So this data become larger. So in secondary data, again, the researcher is able to use large amount of data. Example can be the census data. And also large data sets also allow the researcher the ability to generalize his or her findings to the population at large. And also data scribing is a method by which researchers will extract large amount of information from website. Example can be the social media or media sites into a readable spreadsheet. So what are the major source of secondary data? As we said earlier, mostly they are online. So example would be the government statistics, example, centers for disease control and prevention, and also the National Institute for Health, research university data. And as example I gave was a Stanford University have a special database system for microarray data. Microarray data again are the gene expressions of the data from different patients. We also have institutional data. So institutional information on students, staff, and other employees. Online sources can be Facebook, Twitter, and also popular data sources like Data Driven, Cargo. Cargo.com is very good for data mining uh, professionals. There we have so many data set, so many techniques used. So as a data analysis, 
whether you're a data miner, data scientist, cargo.com is a website that, again, especially if you are new to the field, you're just a beginner of the field. You can gain a lot of information from those websites. So these are some of the resources for secondary data. Example, the first one is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. The web address is on the left side. Also, we have Large Health Maintenance Organization, uh, Cochrane Library, the US National Center for Health and Statistics. Then we have the World Health Organization, the Mayo, Mayo Clinic, So we also have the Mayo Clinic, the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. Most likely this data will be about medical data. Example will be the Stanford we mentioned about the microarray data. The US Census Bureau, they also have data set. And US Department of Health and Human Services, Cargo, cargo.com, very good website. Also we have the UCI, University of California, Heaven data repository. If you, if you Google UCI data sets, again, you get the link. Um, so those, again, these are just few. Online, we have so many, so many. Now, what is the disadvantage of secondary data? Here we say the uncertainty of constructs. I would say the construct is the, the topic concept. So I would say, that's one of the disadvantages. Understanding the data. Since we are not the one who use this data, we need to take time to study the data, to understand the data, how they get all the way to the stage where the data is. Most likely they will go through data preparation. In data preparation itself, we have so many algorithms, so many techniques. So the original study focus may be different from the your steady focus. You are using the same data, but again, your focus is different from the original uh, studies that generated data. Also, ambiguity of measurement error. With secondary data, you may not be aware of all the details of the study procedure. That's very important. That takes us back to, again, our first disadvantage. You have to understand the data. You need to study the data. Also, passage of time with secondary data, the information may be outdated. Example be the census data that was collected again every year, once a year. I mean, once every 10 years. And this can be both a limitation and also strength. If one is interested in study how the concept has changed over time. So secondary data and ethical consideration. Uh, we said with secondary data, our data is well prepared. The privacy issue has been solved. So yet, though a researcher uses secondary data does not interact with the study participants, ethically concerns are still important to, the, to consider. So we should consider the ethical decision made in the original studies. Also, we need to consider how much information we intend to reveal in our studies. And also we should be responsible for protecting the identities of the, our participants. So this will be the conclusion of uh, our lectures which cover chapter eight of the course textbook, uh, secondary data. Again, secondary data is one of the common data we are using now for most research work. The main advantage is to the cost and the time. Take lesser time to have that data and take almost no cost to get the data. Secondary data, we need time, go to the field, and we need to collect this data and analyze this data. So most works and uh, research, if I can use the secondary data to do a research and I'll get a good result, there's no need trying to generate my own data, which is using a primary data unless we are not 100 sure if the data will do well in our research studies 
So again, wish everybody the best. And also we are going to have the midterm soon. The midterm exams will cover chapter one to eight. So this is the last chapter for the midterm. So again, thank you for your time.